Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. My first program printed the word Chris across the screen. And this was programmed in the basic language on a Commodore VIC-20. And of course, I, I moved on to the Commodore 64, and then eventually on to a, a PC, DOS, uh, and doing a little more basic programming. But beyond that, I, I kind of lost interest. Uh, I became interested in software and the usage of software uh, more than I did in building the software. So I really didn't do much more programming past those early basic years. But I do have uh, an understanding of logic, most certainly. A big appreciation for it. I'm a very logical creature, much to my wife's dismay. I've got a top five list is submitted by Ben Wright, the top five tips for getting into programming. Hello, Chris. I've been watching your blog at chris.perillo.com for a long time now. Been seeing a trend in what you've been leaning towards, more applications and accessories rather than core geek technology. By this, I mean technology that's quite advanced and gives the person the status of geek for knowing how to use it or even simply knowing the existence of it. I'm talking, of course, of programming languages, yet they are the foundation of everything on your computer screen right now. They're used for everything that your computer does. Hang on. You may be thinking, no, but don't ones and zeros do everything? Well, that's true, but how is a human meant to be able to code in binary zeros and ones to make up a single operation or a character. So programming languages can be thought of as middle ground of sorts between machine code and human speak. Anyway, let's get to the list. Number one, set your goals in relation to the programming language you wish to use. Because there are a lot of programming languages out there. In fact, I'm sure uh, people in the live chat room right now at live.perillo.com below me are probably typing in the languages that they know and understand. So there's a lot of them out there. If you're a casual programmer or wish to choose a language that meets these needs, such as Python, yet if you want to choose a language for a professional career, you might be better learning C or C++ or Java if you wish to get into game development. This is not to say that one language is better than another, but some are used more commonly than others. For example, it would be very hard to make a professional career with games using BASIC. If you've never programmed before, I'd suggest learning BASIC as it would give you the foundation of how programming works. Just Basic, that's one word, is a free compiler for the basic language and comes with a large source of documentation. It's important to note. And I believe Visual Studio Express is available for free from Microsoft. And I've seen demonstrations on YouTube. There's a kid. And when I say kid, I mean like kid who is demonstrating how you can create your own web browser on Windows uh, using uh, a free programming platform available for Microsoft, the Visual Studio Express, the new version, 2008. At least it's the new version as the time of this recording. Number two, be realistic. Make sure that what you want to do and what programming language you want to use is appropriate for that language and is also an achievable goal. Don't go thinking you're going to be making next year's uh, best-selling game six months after you start your programming career or any time by yourself for that matter. A common misconception with programming is its power. Games such as Gears of War, World of Warcraft, etc. took years to create with people working 100 plus hours a week. And the development costs are in the billions. And remember, there are a lot of programming languages. They all have their strengths and they all have their drawbacks. Uh, you know, I've, I've wrestled with that in, in a lot of the projects that I've wanted to do. I've had to turn to uh, programmers and software developers uh, to get their uh, ideas on what platforms and what programming languages I might consider using um, as I, uh, you know, wanted to roll forward with my various projects. Number three, reading. This is a must for programming. If you don't like reading, then programming is not for you. Asking questions on forums is a great way to develop skills and learn ways around problems. But reading is the source where you will glean all your information from. Forums can be flooded with opinions, and it's hard to find a teacher on the same frequency to your needs. Adding to this, make sure you get the right book for your needs. Don't go get an advanced book if you're beginning to take it slow and get each concept down as it comes. Compile the code when asked to compile the code within the book. At the end of each chapter, I like to look back and try to write a program that shows my skills. Then if I'm having problems with it, I know to look back to that chapter. When I was fiddling with basic programming, um, most of the code that you would copy down was not necessarily available on disk. 
or cassette tape for that matter, but they were it was printed code in magazines. And sometimes there would be like 74 pages of printed code and you would have to set it up in like a recipe holder of sorts and you'd have to type in, you'd have to key in every command, every poke and every peek and every go sub only to get to the end uh, to learn that you had some kind of error. And you looked at it and you said, but I copied it down exactly the same way. Because some moron who was doing the translation for the magazine uh, may have mistaken an I for a one or a zero for the letter O. And that ended my interest in programming real quick. Uh, moving on. Number two, or number four as the case would be. Patience is very important. Keep going if your code is not working. Take a step back and think what you've done wrong. Learn how to use a debugger or go back to a book and read up on the area which you think you made the mistake. Many language books are made for directly learning as well as referencing. Don't feel embarrassed if you have to look at your beginner book again because you forgot how to do something. It's only going to benefit you, your code, and the people that use your code. Adding to this, if you feel like you're going nowhere with fast focus, or I should say, if you feel like you're going nowhere, fast focus on where you are going now and where you are now. Think how these concepts apply practically to development in any situation and you should soon be back on track. Number five, you've decided to do it. So be enthusiastic about the language you are learning, join a community about that language, talk and chat about concepts you are learning and cool ways you have learned to utilize them. If you need help, just ask, but make sure it's the right place. Also, if you want to do game development, don't start there. Start with the language, learn the language, then go into the area you aspire, or you, you are aspiring to get into, I should say. People will appreciate it if you took the time to learn a language before you started developing. Failure is an option. Remember this, as people will criticize your code, but this is in the hopes that you will allow, or you will be allowed, and it will enable you to become a better programmer. Have fun and enjoy programming. Uh, you know, this is a, it's a fast growing field, uh, you know, even uh, I, I'm from the state of Iowa. I went to the University of Northern Iowa, you and I, go Panthers. And uh, there were a lot of people in the business college who studied COBOL. And you're thinking, COBOL? I, does anybody use COBOL? Yeah. A lot of the legacy applications in uh, the accounting field apparently rely heavily on COBOL. Yes, it is ancient, but those programs still work quite well. Uh, you know, I, I think even Latin is a dead language. I mean, the, the, the language Latin is a dead language, but we still know it, right? Uh, I think once a programming language is out there, if it gains any notoriety or any acceptance, especially in the mass market, I think it'll be here uh, for a while. Punch cards. I, I never had to learn on punch cards. I think that uh, that would have ended my trip even quicker, uh, I tell you. COBOL, Fortran. Oh, boy. Yeah, if you don't know those words. Now, some people say, you know, they program HTML. Um... I don't consider HTML a programming language. It is a language, the hypertext markup language. But knowing and learning HTML does not make you a programmer. They're, they're two different things. Uh, it's a markup language, um, meaning if I do a bold, bold in HTML, you know, you tag B, close tag B, everything in between it is bold. I didn't program that, I just marked it up. I marked up that text. and to program something, it would be to make it do something. So like JavaScript would be a script. You would program a JavaScript, a PHP. Uh, that would be a, a, a scripting language. Uh, that's programming PHP. You don't program HTML. You merely use HTML to mark up text. So if you know HTML, great. Everybody should. It is, I mean, you want to talk about beyond basic. HTML is really super simple. CSS Cascading style sheets, we might get into at some point in the future. Uh, it's a way to style your web document, your HTML. Uh, I'm glad I, I learned about it when I did, uh, but uh, I'm sorry, am I shouting? Sorry, me too. I get excited when I talk about programming stuff. Anyway, appreciate the top five tips, and I'm sure some uh, budding programmers appreciate them as well. If anybody else out there has got uh, any top five tips to share with us, whether it's related to programming or technology or maybe about neither of them, uh, feel free to send them to me. My email address is chris at perillo.com. I am a human being. Ing, as I just uh, illustrated there. 
ever so not eloquently. Uh, sorry about that. I uh, had a little too much garlic, uh, apparently, a few minutes ago. Um, anyway, you can email me again, chris at perillo.com. And if you want to interact with the chatters and talk about stuff, whatever it happens to be, you're welcome to uh, stop by. Uh, there are a little over 300 people who are watching the live stream right now as we're recording these videos for everybody to watch. Uh, and uh, you know, you could be one of those people, one of those 300 it's not madness, it's Perillo. And it's live, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, at live.perillo.sparta!